the other thing from the PDGA that uh, came out is Nico LeCastro's suspension has been announced. This is from Ulti World posted on August 9th. Nico LeCastro has been suspended for nine months by the PDGA's disciplinary committee for a Class A infraction following an altercation with the rules marshal at the 2022 European Open. Um, I'm interested to hear your opinion with, on this, Hunter. Well, it's been met with mostly like open arms like yeah that makes sense but somewhat mixed reactions from the disc golf world ulti world actually put out a, yeah. an opinion piece titled why nicola castro's suspension is unjust and far I, too long i, which I they, read it and my it the cha- biggest argument it changed my opinion it changed it changed your opinion yeah fascinating because i mean correct me if i'm wrong their biggest argument was mainly due to loss of income and then comparisons to other sports right um kind of in it he literally part says, of it. like he literally said in it like it if I did that at a C tier, it would make sense. But yes, yes, that that was a big part of his argument was the overarching idea that this this um, suspension applies to people that are playing at their local parks and people that are making their living from the sport. That was his big argument. He he then also took the the amount of money that he was losing in income and compared it to About actions. About eighty grand is what he estimated. Right, eighty. I can get eighty six five was his final number, and he compared that to okay, what would I have to do in other sports to get a fine of that size, basically. Mm. Um, so my my that, that 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 idea doesn't really work because like if you suspend Paul for nine months, it doesn't affect his income right. because he has a million dollar yeah. a year thing. No, my, if you suspend Lance Brown for nine months, he might only lose like whatever his PDGA income is. You know what I'm right. saying? So like you can't use the number because he wasn't fined. So you can't treat it as a fine. Well, but it, you can treat it as a complete loss of income though for, for you can you can treat it as a player. It's there. Okay. So you can treat it but you as can't use the numbers. What I'm saying, Cause no, the number is so relative. Well, regardless, regardless of the number, you can say that mo the way those rules were made when they were made and whatever, it applies to players who are playing casually in their tournaments, whatever. But then you can't use the same set of rules, I don't think, for a player who is doing it for their living. Um, I think that there there needs to be a unique because, like, when I, it, when I disagree is, with that statement. Really, you you think that what Nico what Nico did deserves like what at the end of the day what he did he deserves to lose a year's worth practically of his income for that. I, I didn't say that. I said I disagree that they should be treated differently. I think that what you do at a B tier, C tier, and what the pros do, like that, I I think it makes sense that the suspension's the same. Mm, but I th- I think the punishment should be. Di- I think well, really, what I what I really think is it should probably be a Where fine you structure. Where the line as a pro? Because I'm technically a pro in the PDGA. Okay, so well then, my suspension. Well then different? they should make them all, maybe then the maybe then they should make them all less harsh then. Because here's the problem. The That's problem fine. is when you're punishing a player who is an amateur or a local pro or whatever who's not depending on it for a living, you're punishing them because the only... And this, he, he said this in the, you, or in the Ulti Word article. The only thing that you can use against that player to punish them is to take away you being able to play competitively because you can't really say, oh, I'm going to impact your income. That's going to be the harsh punishment. Well, that's not the goal of the PDGA. Was it? It's not to impact his income because if Clash Disc would have kept him on in Gateway, right. it, then the estimate, it, Gateway did keep him on, but the it's estimate what, wouldn't change because 25% is the income. But it doesn't affected. change that that's what happened and that points to the fact that there probably needs to be a change. that's not the PDGA's fault. That's not the PDGA's fault. What do you mean it's not the PDGA's fault? The PDGA didn't say, hey, Clash Disc, you got to drop him. No, 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 not that. I- Clash Disc dropped him before the PDGA even set his suspension. His suspension could have been for two weeks, and Clash Disc would have still dropped him, which would have still affected his still income gonna, for the rest of the year. He's still going to lose a ton of money just not playing at PDGA-sanctioned events. 20 grand is yeah, estimated. That's a lot grand. of money for what he did. in disc that's a lot golf- less than 86, though. Yes, but so you can't Nick, use the eighty six. I don't. Figure. I don't think if I watched Nico get up in his face like that, and you said, "Yeah, we're gonna slap him with a twenty thousand dollars fine." That's not the whole thing, though. That's not the whole thing. More happened after the camera was off. I regardless of what he did, twenty thousand dollars. No way. That's just no way. Not that's for not a fine. You're looking at it as a fine. It's not a fine. Yes, but it's the. I'm he saying that the way that the PDGA suspension, grand. the way that it applies to pro players, it's going to be a fine almost for every time because there is earnings earned by players at PDGA sanctioned event. Anytime you suspend that player, it's going to be treated as a fine. It, like every single time, no matter who you suspend, they are going to lose. Be treated as a fine in their the way it's going to impact them. So assuming you're also assuming that Nico's going to cash at all the events over the next nine months. What if he didn't? 
Well, he's, he didn't get fined at all then. <laughs> he's gonna, first of all. And second of all, know, you, you can't... Just that, I'm just saying that's why you can't treat it as a fine. Because you don't you don't know what he lost. He could have lost two grand. But You can't treat it as a fine. He's losing the opportunity to make money. So it is. So then it is sure. a fine. <laughs> so like, but I'm, I'm just saying... The 80 that, grand number that it came from, that's sponsors. And sponsors dropped him before, this, before the suspension yes, was made public no. at all. I'll, all I'm saying is the PDJ rules... The PDJ did nothing wrong in the sense that they acted by their guidelines. So in that exactly. sense, I don't have a problem with what the PDJ did. I, I'm i fine with the suspension they gave him because they went to their guidelines, they took what was written, and they applied it correctly. I agree with that wholeheartedly. That is fine. What I'm saying is I think it needs to be revisited because I think that nine months is pretty rough. I think it's pretty rough. That's that's that's. Well, we also have to remember that. Yeah, the I agree that it can be relooked at. Um, the PDGA though, within their guidelines, like they could have went twenty four months, so yeah, they were very no, light. No, and like I said, um, what what the way they applied their rules is fine, and I think that they're not catching very much slack because they have it written. And like what Nico did is literally in their textbooks, in their rule books, and then their suspension length is also in those rule books. So what they did at the end exactly. of the day, I have no problem with, and I also. Like Nico knows that's in the rule books, right? So like, yeah, Nico, that's what I'm saying. we can't put the the no blame on the PDG. No, like, the, I'm not blaming them. All I'm saying is, all I'm saying is, because this is a the first time, this is like this is a kind of an unprecedented situation. I think it's time to look at the structures. Right. I mean, punishment. it happened with Bradley Williams again, and they did look at it and restructured it. It happened with him. What? It happened with Bradley Williams a few years back. Yeah, but that this was is, this is the restructured rules. Right, I think it needs, well. It was different with Bradley Williams because he wasn't making nearly as much money off the tour as Nico is. Um, but that's what I'm saying. You can't. You can't look at this. Isn't a. This isn't a fine. You can't look at the money. It's a player because losing a chance to make money months. though for nine months. A nine so, month suspension goes over the off season. So what? What? How do you factor loss of income there? Okay, I for a certain amount like of you time. Can't, you can't look at money. You can't look at money. I said what I said. Okay, I think they need to revisit it. I can look at money I, because I'm fine with them revisiting, the player is going to lose money. The player is going to lose money 99% of the time, so I can look at the money. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> but he, he's not fined. If the PGA no, was fined, he's not, he's not fined. He is suspended, in which case he will lose chance to make money for a long time. Sure. So that is sure. So, but I'm saying so I can look, aren't based on the money. So I can look at the money, not a certain dollar amount. I agree. You are, can't, you still, are you just as upset if it's someone who never cashes at a pro, at pro tour events but plays them all? Am I, what do you mean? My just, uh, just as was said. I well, you I don't think it's just. I don't as, think. I don't think it's just. I don't think it would have gotten my attention as much. But that's that doesn't change the fact that I think the rules need revisited. I think that it took a specific example with a player that makes a good amount of money playing disc golf to make me realize that oh, they should probably revisit the rules. So yeah, yeah I personally, I think that the tour card should be the separator. I think that the Pro Tour should have these rules and not the PDGA, and I think it should be a fine. So yeah, it's the I, same across the board. I think what that's where I think it should be. Right. I think but what it, I think it does come down to PGA that. Thing, it's got to be this. I, because also, if this happened at a local tournament, I want that guy suspended for nine months. Mm-hmm. And there's no way to define the line. There's no way to draw a line between a touring pro and right. a local player right now right. within well, the PDGA. Well, when so I, I don't think it can be changed. Right. When I when I say revisit, I'm kind of what I'm meaning by that is yes, what you're saying. Like I think that there needs to be, and we've said this a lot, but there needs to be a difference between the touring pro and how they're treated and what's expected of them, and the the punishments for them versus the local pro. So that I agree with that because like I, I would rather see a fine structure. I. I think suspensions are a unique thing that are should be for more like very severe incidents um, where it's like, yeah, that guy just needs to be away from the tour. And maybe Nico did need a small suspension of some sort, but I do. I would rather see fines, I think. And I think fines would get yeah, I think fines, more attention. Fines are where it needs to be. The tough part is you're still on a line of like a player like Nico could have afforded a fine. A player, a ran, like pick a random player who's not cash, he might not have been able to afford a fine. And so now by putting that fine and being like, hey, you can't play a PDJ event until you come up with yeah. whatever the fine is. Because the fine needs to be substantial enough that it's not like a like when Mark Cuban was fined 15 grand for saying the F word and he just drops the F word again because he's like, that's funny. Who cares? It can't just be like a little, you right. know, oh, that's inconsequential 20 bucks. Yeah, well, what, what the frick? I'm doing that again next week. But it also can't be so much that it's like Nico gets a bill for seven grand and is like, 
I can't pay that. Well, and now it's not a suspension. It's I'm never be able to play disc golf again. Yeah. Well, the problem is that does happen in every sport because it is relative. Like when LeBron James gets a fine versus a rookie who is just like sure. just on a rookie sure. minimum contract, like you have the exact same scale, just have more money. So fine. You just have to figure it out. There's no like perfect there, system for this. Scale, well, yeah. I just think the scale in NBA, if you fine. 10 grand everyone in the nba can at least afford it and it's a big enough number that like yeah lebron doesn't give two care two rips about it but enough players are affected by it that number in disc golf though might legitimately be like 100 bucks and like what's well, a 100 dollar fine i think it'd be like 500 dollars. i think a 500 hundred dollar fine is enough to get that might be yeah but it's still it's a weird it's a weird line but where the pdj is now like they had to take action they had to yeah. do something no. and within their rules. They gave him a light sentencing. Yeah, so like no, to me, I, at the end, nine months makes sense. When, and the way the timing wise, like the majority of it is in the off season. Yeah. So he's really not really missing that much. No, when it, when it came out, I was not upset at all. And I'm still at the end of the day, I'm not like the, like I said, the PDGA acted completely within their guidelines. So I don't think that anybody can be upset at the PDGA because Nico knew the rules. He knew the punishment chances and he still did it. So and we have to remember we didn't see the whole situation <laughs> because there was more that happened off camera that's been verified by several people. And when the PDJ came to him, he, didn't, he refused to yeah. cooperate with no. him after. So he, it's he, beyond just the one thing. He did get what was coming to him. I, I all I'm saying is I think it's just another, you know, straw to where we need to start differentiating the rules for touring professionals versus non-touring professionals well that, yeah and it all saying. starts with you need to define the line with a pro with the tour card. right you need to find the line who's a touring professional yeah that's where it starts yeah no i, I um that's that's also what, that's came up against the suspension uh he posted on his instagram nine months for a first time offender question mark which means that's a questionable start first there yeah that's, um, yeah that's a very dumb statement. i mean he's, literally I, compilations I of him doing this <laughs> yeah i get where he's technically a first time offender but at the same time he's it's not. Yeah. Uh, Paul said, I understand the situation could have been handled differently, but to claim intimidation as an offense seems off to me. The official doesn't step back like someone who's intimidated. He also uh, he also oh stares the player gosh. down instead of trying to defuse the situation. That's the worst. Professional officials should know that players' stress levels are elevated when competing in all sports, so why instigate the issue? I hope Nico appeals the situation. From what I saw, it's a Class C at most at PDGA. That's so two treat things. all professional um, athletes as babies. Yeah. Well, two things. One... Uh, we didn't see everything. So, A. B, I felt that the official handled it very well, I personally. Know. The official didn't escalate anything. He didn't anything. do anything to escalate. And, for, for and my, he also wasn't staring him down, like, puffing his chest. Yeah. He was walking away, still looking he's at Nico, probably, probably thinking, what the yeah, frick just happened? puzzled. And number three, um, just because somebody doesn't get intimidated doesn't mean you aren't trying to intimidate them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that does, it doesn't say well, in yeah, the PDJ it, rules, oh, intimidation, but they have to actually be intimidated. <laughs> like I'm that, impressed yeah. with how well he handled that. That just cracks me up. Like, yeah, he like, did you watch? Like, it's like, did you watch what he just did? Like, it was like a joke. Well, imagine if he did that to a player. Yeah. Like, imagine if he did that to another player like, on the card. It yeah. was like, su it was such a joke. Like trying to defend that is just like it's what silly happened to me. off yeah. camera, Hunter? What was the more like All they said is that he wouldn't comply, know. basically. Like, okay. he wouldn't, well, like, it, discuss well, it. Allegedly, I've heard that his caddy had to kind of pull him away from the official. Dang. As it continued to escalate. Oh. Well, then so I he got, just got more... He just got a little more aggressive. I think he got more heated. And then after the round, the PDGA came to him before he was before he was de uh, DQ'd from the event, wanting, like, a more explanation what's going on, and he wouldn't talk to them. He wouldn't cooperate. Yeah. So when you pull it all together, like... There's a lot more to the story than the 20 second clip we saw of him going why 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 and then walking over to the guy when yeah. the camera cuts. That was it's not like the camera cut and he's like oh the camera's off. All right, sick. All right, yeah. I'm back to normal. Like it, it yeah. there's more to it. Yeah. Um. But this sparked a Brody tweet where he said just saw the screenshot. Gotta say it's a pretty bad take, Paul. Fair. I mean that's a that's a fair tweet. But mm -hmm. given Brody and Paul's history, uh, it obviously led to some fans pointing out Brody coming after Paul and saying they thought Brody was gonna leave Discraft. And then Paul, you got to give some points to Paul here. He did kind of dunk on Brody when he said, he has me blocked, but I hope he stays. Talking about Discraft. I like the fact that he has to throw discs with my name on it. That was a, I mean, you, you, that, that made was me pretty, laugh. That's pretty, pretty good. That got me right there. there.